there something majestic about the olive tree? The leaves, they seem to grab a hold of the worries of the day as you walk through. You come out the other side feeling better. Being a California ripe olive grower, I'm very proud of that. It's something that is so unique to California. The rest of the world is trying to imitate it, but we invented it. There's a reason why you see kids with olives on their fingers. The flavor of it blends in with so many types of dishes. We put them in everything. To be honest, they go in our spaghetti. Salads, even omelets. I make a tamale pie. You can stuff them, wrap them with bacon. Lamb with green olives. My granddaughter comes after school, and sometimes we have to fight over who's going to finish off the olives. <laughs> Olives were introduced to California by the missionaries 300 years ago. Essentially, in California, we have the big greenhouse that's ideal for olives. As old as they are, as important as they are in the world, they are a misunderstood fruit. So if you've ever tasted one off the tree, you'll know what the bitter is. California ripe olive industry really didn't exist back then. Processed olives were only sold locally because there was no real way to keep them from spoiling. We forget that modern canning methods didn't exist then. Without Frida Eman, who knows, maybe nobody would have figured out how to make ripe olives. Frida was a German immigrant who came to California and first started with what we started as farmers, a little 20-acre olive orchard. That was in the early 1890s when there was really a nationwide financial panic. A lot of businesses failed and agriculture had a particularly difficult time. People wanted her to file bankruptcy, but she didn't want to do that. Frida took an idea to utilize the California olive in a different way. She was curing them in a wash tub, rinsing the olives to get the bitterness out. And she was kind of appalled when she saw the first batch because they were this ugly mottled color. She goes to the agricultural professor at Berkeley. When the professor tasted the olives, he thought they were the best olives he'd ever tasted. She then went to work trying to figure out how to make the olives more attractive. You put these wine barrels cut in half under the back porch, and Frida Eman got up five times all night experimenting with this recipe. She discovered that if you incorporated oxygen into the process that you could get a uniform black color. And then she threw in some horseshoes, uh, which provided some iron to set the color. She got a good tasting olive. It was a huge revolution in the olive business. And they created the Eman Olive Company in 1898. Within about five years, it was a million dollar company. The whole ripe olive industry kind of burgeoned after that. It was such a wonderful recipe that everybody else copied it. So it's her gift to the world. No one had ever conceived that you can take this bitter fruit and process it as a California ripe olive, either black or green. It opened up a whole new market for us. They're picked off the tree green. They're held in acetic acid for six months. And then we take them in to our processing tanks. The lye debitters the olive, and the oxygenation turns the olive dark. We introduce some ferrous glutinate to the product. We remove the pit from the olive. We cook the product, put it in a can. At that point in time, it's ready for labeling and shipping. Being a woman in agriculture today, I marvel at what Frida did. There's a lot of pride that comes from continuing what was started years ago. California ripe olive is a balance between the perfect amount of salty and buttery and the perfect texture. There's a lot of love that goes into what we do. In the ripe olive industry in California, today probably we're approximately 15,000 acres with a new technology of mechanical harvesting. I think that you're gonna see this industry have a new growth spurt. There's a lot of hard work that's went into this, and there's a lot of history here. You still need to know which end of the shovel to hold on to. You still have to get up in the morning and care about what it is that you're doing. We do also farm almonds, prunes, and walnuts, but far and away, our favorite is olives. Olives were the first thing I planted. As my grandma used to say, you got to dance with who brung you, and olives are who brung us. I intend on doing it the rest of my life.